Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt. Tonight I'm going to be doing something really cool. See this fly? Probably not, but we'll get to a close-up view in a second. This thing has got to be from the 1940s. I found this and a bunch of other fish and stuff in one of these antique stores, consignment shops out in western Maryland. The owner of that section said it was her great-grandfather's, and this lady was older than me. So we estimated his fishing days to be in the 40s and 50s. So I could be off by a decade or more, but there's no question this thing is old. The hook is completely rusted, the materials are faded and dry rotted, but it's a really cool pattern. So I think uh, I'm going to give it a shot. Let's take a look at it, see if we can tie this thing. In the vise right now is this mystery pattern. It's something a little bit bigger than a size 4, not quite as big as a size 2, so I think it's a salmon fly. It's at least 75 years old. Not the pattern, the actual fly itself is 75 years old. Probably hasn't seen the water since the 1940s. So looking at the materials, I'm trying to decipher what this is and break it down. You can tell there's natural mallard flank in the wing. There's a slip of either duck or goose fibers there for the tail. Hard to see in the, in the camera right now, but there is a silver tag right there behind the, the red tail. And some brown hackle up there. Looks a little bit like soft hackle. It's just kind of dry rotted. And the body, that's the hardest part that I haven't quite figured out yet. I thought it might have been wool, but I tied a couple with wool and it didn't really look like that. I tried some uh, synthetic yarn that looks a little bit a little bit better. It might just be thread. It might be a floss, uh, some kind of cotton. I'm not sure. But we're going to give it a shot and see how this thing turns out. It's pretty interesting looking fly. I'm starting with a size 8. This is a terrestrial hook or, or a hopper kind of terrestrial hook. Now just lay a base of black thread down all the way to the start of the bend. Okay, this thing does have a tag on it, so silver tag, about three turns, three wraps. Tie this in with the gold up. That way when you flip it to wrap, you will see the, the silver. So I'm just going to go, get that out of the way for a second, about three down and then turn around and come right back up. Okay, that looks like the third one there. Now, let's catch this in. Be careful with your thread on this, because this mylar tinsel will cut your thread if you're not careful with it. So will the point of the hook if you nick that on your way around. So go ahead and snip this excess off. The tail of this, this thing is, it was some turkey or, or a duck or goose, a slip of dyed red. Hard to tell in that picture because it was certainly faded, but it was about almost as long as the body. So I'm going to go about right there. Just catch that in. Uh, cut a little bit of those feathers right there. I think we've got enough of a slip showing right there. So if you've got the alignment where you want it, go ahead and catch these in. Snip off your butt ends. Next we'll tie in the rib. Either thick blue thread or a floss. I'm going to use this floss. I like this in that it does tend to you know, you'll see fibers come out if you're not careful, but you can change the width of it by spinning it clockwise to make it tighter or, or counterclockwise to, you know, lay it flat. So it's kind of convenient wrapping with floss. 
Now the body on this, it was hard to tell. I think it was, I thought originally that it was going to be a, a wool, a wool yarn, but when I tried tying it with wool yarn, it was a little bit buggier. So maybe the, the body on that original was just thread. Maybe it was a floss. So I'm using a, a synthetic, it, a synthetic floss kind of yarn. I think it will look, it will, it will give us that flatter body. So I'm going to go ahead and take my thread back up to the eye, probably about where we're going to stop wrapping the body. I'll just put a half hitch right there to hold it. And now what I do on wrapping bodies like this, either on streamer or, or big wet flies, I will wrap it all the way up, then maybe back halfway and then back up again if I'm working on getting a little taper. So I will do that. Then maybe you might even need to tie in another piece up here and work it halfway back and down. So you'll see what I'm talking about as I wrap this. I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch the next two minutes in real time. Okay, I'm back. That's still not a perfect taper, but you can get the point of how to do that. So, wrapping the rib is this blue floss. I'm going to wrap it counter to way, the way I did that one. And I will start off by giving it a, a quick clockwise spin just to, to tighten it up a little bit. And we'll see how that goes. Now, you might have to tighten it up after every couple of wraps if it starts to spread out too much on you. Okay, when you get that in the front, go ahead and catch it off. And don't worry too much about the spacing on that last wrap or two. It will be covered up with the hackle here in just a minute. Speaking of the hackle, this one was just brown. The best as I could tell, it was some type of hen. It wasn't real stiff, but it was dry rotted, so it wasn't the easiest thing to tell. But I'm going to use this, this just brown, natural, soft hen hackle. I'm going to catch it in with the concave side toward the hook. So a couple or three wraps in front and then I'm going to fold it back on itself just to get that stem really caught in. Take my hackle pliers and just wrap this like I would any any soft hackle. It's probably going to take two, maybe two and a half wraps. I don't want it to spin on me right there. Okay. I'm not always this inept. I just got a camera three inches in front of the fly. Sometimes that gets in the way. Okay, so I think that I wasn't is it was that three wraps or is that two? I'm going to go with it either way. Okay, so two wraps behind this to catch this mess of a hackle in. Go ahead and snip this excess off. I'm going to push this back and get a couple of wraps just to get it situated like I want it. Okay. Alright, so there's our, our hackle on this thing. Now the wings on it, this was interesting. This was one of the, the only things that I was sure of, that 75-year-old pattern, was just mallard flank. Now a tip I use here, it's hard to find matching left and right if you've just got a big bag of them, but if you look through them, you can. So I will strip off more on the bottom of it 
than I do on the top. So you have that little curve on the top. Okay, so when you've got two feathers, matching or not matching, it doesn't matter, try to line up your ends and then check the length. About midway through the tail is what that original had and you're gonna have to kind of bunch these up here. Almost like you're doing a, a winged wet fly. So I'm gonna put them right there and then a little pinch wrap on top. Make sure you get around the hook. Okay. Now check your position. Those are a little bit bunched up and they don't have that curve on them, but hey, I think we can get away with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock these in, trim this one up, snip it about as close as you can, make the wrapping head just a little bit easier. And how I do this on wrapping head, just go right back to the eye and build a ramp. And then as you get up, you will eventually capture these butt ends. So when you've got your head to your liking, just four or five turn whip finish and a drop of head cement. And then uh, mystery, 75 year old, no name, unknown fly will be done. Might have a little cleanup. looks like I got some hackle there that are bunched together. So there you have it folks, an interesting tie based off this interesting pattern I found right here. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will consider subscribing. Thanks again.